Welcome back to the channel and in today's video I'm going to be showing you guys a project that I managed to finish in under a week and I've learned a lot from my first attempt so this is an improvement. Alright so I know I haven't made a video in a while and I had plans to do videos like the 181st Bone Trooper Helmet and something else but uh, that uh, didn't go as planned so I'm hoping I get this video out soon but uh never know. Alright, so let's get this project started. I bought this file off of do3d.com and like it, I just showed it's $19 and I print this out in a couple pieces but what you're going to see right now is that it took some time to finish this helmet because of little mistakes like the support material getting catching in front of the print but that's something I could fix. But more importantly, I had to put bond on a certain area where it didn't align properly, and that honestly was better than just using Spot Putty for a problem like that. From there, I just worked my magic and do my best on this helmet. Sanding, filling in, all of that. Once I knew the helmet was ready, I tested some silicone, and that was it. From here, I needed to put something right there, where we're going to put the visor later on. And I always just use cardboard from the box that they shipped Smoothcast 300 in. And it always works out for the best. Right here I have something that looks perfectly fine and it fits the visor spot just fine. From there I start mixing a batch of silicone from Rebound 25, the same company that makes Smoothcast 300. Now right, I just showed you guys something mixed with something else but I'll explain that in a minute. Here I coated the helmet in just regular silicone to catch every detail because these first layers are the very important parts that are going to determine how your casts turn out in the end. And if you do a bad job, you'll definitely know. From here, I need to add some thickening agent called Thyvex. Thyvex is something that makes the silicone, instead of a runny consistency, to something that's more of a, I would say, a clumped up version where it's not going to drip and it's very solid. I forget what to call it but I guess peanut butter consistency it won't move and it's not going to drip and that is something that will help you along this little thing such as the visor area. If I use regular silicone that would just fall down and I'd have to angle it differently but here I'm just filling in the areas just fine with Thyvex mixed material and this is regular silicone and I made this little box and I'll show you guys why this is important. When you're making a mold, you have to have something to hold the mold in place when you make the mother mold afterwards. But those little squares or circles, whatever you use, are called registration keys. And that's why I made this box. I needed to make keys for the mold later on. And I did that just before we made the mold to see if this would cure, and it did. Right here we have a regular block of silicone. And I just cut it up into pieces because we are going to cover the mold in these eight pieces. Regular silicone and these pieces. Right here is where I'm going to attach them everywhere as best as I can, but adding them on was kind of annoying, but after I was done, I was glad. For this next part, you will need a respirator and some gloves that you're just going to want to throw away because right now we will be using epoxy dough. And this is a two-part material that comes in clay form, something like that. For this stuff to work, you have to mix it out together properly. And this stuff is easy to use. You just take out two even amounts and mix them together like dough. And right here, I I just look at the cups and see, I compare them and that's just how I do it. From there, I just mix it together as best as I can because if you do not mix this stuff together, it's pretty easy to tell. Once I think that I mix the dough properly, I start spacing and looking out where I'm going to put the dough. But the big thing I had to do first was make the separator for this mold. And that was that line you see right there of dough. I used a knife to uh, carefully remove the material on one side and then use that material for the rest of the shell on this side of the helmet. And right here I did run out of some material but it wasn't a big deal because I used a, only a third of the material and the rest of the mold is going to use that side of the material. It's a little complicated, but not really. From there, we need to add something to make sure that it will separate after we're done. And we're going to use Ease Release 200. 
And just note that once you use this on the mold, you're not going to be able to stick any more silicone on. It'll just peel off. So keep that in mind that you want to be ready for this. And from there, we're done. Once you've made that and you have your mold ready, you could start casting. And the material that I use for casting is SmoothCast 300. And there's definitely other kinds out there like SmoothCast 65D. That's a very nice material that I want to work with someday. But for now, this is the material that I use. I mix a round of two of them. Uh, just even amounts. That's all you have to do. It's not that complicated to use. From there, I just pour it into the mold. And as you can see there, this is how I do it. I rotate it constantly for about 7 to 11 minutes. It always depends. And then once I think that the mold is ready, or the cast is ready, I take it out. And right here it is. I really love how the helmet is, except for that dent. I'm That's something I have to work on, but other than that, I like this cast of the helmet. And here I am just showing off the comparison. These two helmets are really nice, and I want to get these done as soon as possible. But I'm just glad that I finally finished the mold. This was basically a six-day project, and I thought it would take longer. The clone helmet project took over two months and there was a reason for that. The helmet had so many details that the Mandalorian helmet just didn't have. But funny enough, this Mandalorian helmet has been in the making since December, so yeah, that took a while. But other than that, I was really glad with how it turned out. And I had already made another cast and something weird happened, which has never happened to me, but yeah, uh, I'll make sure that these things work out in the end. This mold is actually much more sturdier than my last one, and the reason for that, I think, has to do with the Thyvex. I haven't used Thyvex in other molds that I've done, and I just really love the material. This is what my garage looks like right now. I have a couple helmets that I want to finish, and I will get them done. I do have plans for this helmet, and I'll show that off uh, as soon as I can, because the paint job is going to take days. Thank you for watching the video. If you liked it, please like, share, and subscribe. It's always appreciated when someone subscribe to the channel. We've grown a lot in the month, well actually less than a month. We've gotten over 200 subscribers and reached one of my goals, 212 subscribers because it's a fun number. But thank you guys for that. You guys are some of the reasons that I keep doing this, so have a good one.